Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. And in today's episode, we're examining the serious issue of contaminated drinking water in the United States. Recent studies indicate that nearly 100 million Americans could be exposed to water containing chemicals linked to health risks, such as cancer and kidney problems. We'll look at how these contaminants might differ based on location and why certain communities may be more vulnerable than others. I'm Alara Skye, and I look forward to discussing these water quality concerns. We'll talk about the types of harmful substances found in tap water, how they get there, and the potential health consequences. From per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, to metals like lead and arsenic, there's a lot to unpack. By understanding the data, we can take steps to safeguard our homes and communities. Let's begin with some background. A 2025 study published in Environmental Health Perspectives analyzed unregulated contaminants in water systems throughout the United States. It discovered that these contaminants, which often come from industrial sources or everyday household products, were present in tap water used by more than 97 million people. An alarming aspect is that many of these chemicals don't currently have strict regulations to keep them under control. That same research shows a disturbing pattern. Areas with higher percentages of Hispanic or Black residents frequently have greater levels of unregulated contaminants. We've seen evidence of such disparity before like in Flint, Michigan. Larger urban water systems and places reliant on groundwater also exhibit higher chemical detections. Over time, these contaminants can stack the odds against health, raising the likelihood of serious chronic issues. One group of chemicals receiving significant attention is PFAS, often referred to as forever chemicals. According to a study published in the Journal of Exposure, Science and Environmental Epidemiology in 2025, PFAs were found in at least 45% of water systems near cities or major industrial sites. These substances persist in the environment because they don't break down readily, eventually making their way into our water via factories, landfills, and even consumer goods. The PFAS in these systems are more than just a technical concern. Their presence correlates with increased cancer rates, particularly in the digestive system, lungs, and thyroid. For instance, PFBS, a PFAs variant, raised the risk of oral cancer by 33%. PFNA, another PFAS, corresponded to higher thyroid cancer odds. The researchers estimate that PFAs in drinking water could be responsible for anywhere between 4,626 and 6,864 new cancer cases annually, highlighting the importance of investigating what's in your local water supply. It's not just PFAs we should be worried about. A report from One Green Planet underlines the presence of other harmful contaminants. Trihalomethanes, for example, can form when chlorine, used to disinfect water, interacts with organic materials like decaying leaves. These byproducts have been connected to bladder cancer when they occur in elevated concentrations. Another concern is nitrates from fertilizer runoff which can pose kidney and cancer risks and create specific threats for infants. Arsenic is another significant point. Though it can naturally leach into water from rocks or soil, high levels of arsenic are anything but safe. Detected in 43 states, arsenic can build up in the body and increase cancer risk over time. Old or deteriorating infrastructures also present issues. Lead, for example, often comes from outdated pipes affecting children's brain development and impacting adult neurological health. Meanwhile, fluoride, intentionally added to many water systems, has raised questions regarding its neurotoxic potential and potential harm to bone density. These problems underscore why the location and condition of your water source matter so much. Disparities in exposure mean families in certain regions, especially those already dealing with socioeconomic challenges, may be disproportionately affected. But no one is immune. Even areas with newer infrastructure might face threats if groundwater sources are contaminated or if PFAs from consumer products seep into water supplies. The good news is there are actionable steps to reduce exposure. Checking your local water quality report is key. These reports, often found online, 
Detail which substances have been identified in your area's drinking water and in what amounts. Next, choosing an effective filtration system can make a big difference. Options include activated carbon block filters, reverse osmosis units, and ion exchange systems. Each addresses contaminants differently, so it's worthwhile to determine which is most effective for the problems identified in your region. Being proactive can also extend to community advocacy. If your area's water supply is flagged for contaminants, you can join local groups or initiatives that push for policy changes and improved water treatment methods. This can be as direct as calling attention to poor infrastructure or as broad as urging stricter regulations on chemicals like PFAS. In any case, collective action often triggers faster, more robust solutions than individual efforts. Absolutely. Contaminated water is a national concern and its impacts go beyond immediate health issues. Potential links to developmental delays in children, hormone imbalances, and increased cancer risks affect families for generations. Recognizing the higher vulnerability of certain communities helps direct resources where they're needed most. Ensuring fair access to clean water is critical for public health and for minimizing long-term health disparities. Let's outline the practical steps once more. First, look up your community's annual water quality report. This document will show which contaminants have been detected and whether they exceed recommended levels. Second, consider installing a comprehensive water filtration system, making sure it's designed to remove or significantly reduce substances, such as PFAs, lead, arsenic, nitrates, and trihalomethanes. Third, if the data shows that your area's contamination levels are high, Raising concerns collectively can be a strong lever for change. In addition, it's important to remain aware of how everyday products contribute to water contamination. For instance, PFAs can originate in non-stick cookware or stain-resistant fabrics, which eventually end up in landfills and potentially leach into water sources. Being informed about which consumer products contain these chemicals is another way to reduce overall environmental load. Likewise, Keeping an eye on local agricultural runoff practices can help address nitrate and pesticide residues in groundwater. Before we close, I want to emphasize the core message. Nearly 100 million Americans live in areas where tap water contains unregulated or risky contaminants. The specific threats range from forever chemicals linked to cancer to heavy metals that undermine children's development. Even fluoride, still added to many municipal water systems, has been connected to potential neurotoxic effects. Staying informed is your best defense. By knowing what's in your water, you can protect yourself and your family. A filter that addresses your water's particular issues is a key step, and staying engaged with your community ensures that you can contribute to broader changes. It can feel overwhelming, but each measure, from reading water reports to advocating for stricter guidelines on contaminants, helps build healthier environments. Thank you for joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and I appreciate your time and attention to this critical topic. By recognizing that clean water is not a luxury, but a necessity, we can take meaningful steps to protect our families and improve overall public health. We hope this information encourages you to learn more, take action, and share these insights with those around you. We'll be back with more discussions on important health issues. Until then, Stay proactive and informed. If you found this episode helpful, consider checking your local water quality report and exploring filters for your home. Clean water is fundamental to well-being, and we can all play a role in keeping it that way. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.